James, it's time for Caravan of Garbage. That's my favourite thing, maybe. Is it? Nah, not really. What's what's your actual favourite thing? In the world? Yes. Jumping. jumping wow, well, you're in for a treat. There's going to be some jumping in this. I wish I had a thought of, of a better thing, like a funnier thing. No, no, it's thing. locked in now. It's locked in and it's now it's canon. Okay. Your favourite thing in the world is jumping. Right. How far? As far as I can. Wow. As, w- as wide as I can, as long as I can. Also, not vertical leaps. Whatever, mate. Okay, because there's some vertical leaps in this, so you're probably not going to like it. Anyway, so my question for you is, what is your... Who's been your favourite villain thus far in the in the Marvel Universe? Is it is it the trickster god Loki? Nah. Is it the giant sinister robot Ultron? Nah. Are you sure your favourite villain, your favourite Avengers villain, isn't the sinister forces of heavy metal rock and roll music? <laughs> this is an issue of the West Coast Avengers from 1985. Oh my now, two God. things. The West Coast Avengers are sort of the red-headed stepchild of the Avengers, but this contains a lot of the Avengers that it's you will see. It's got some key dudes. It's got some key dudes you see in the movies. It's got Iron Man in his sweet Silver Centurion outfit. It's got Hawkeye. It's got Vision. It's got Scarlet Witch. It's got assorted Antmans and Giantmans. Whoa! And it's got some other losers. <laughs> Whoa! So also, also, what you should know is this is a fill-in issue. Okay. So there was a big storyline beforehand. Yeah, right. And there was gonna, there's going to be a big storyline afterwards. But so the creative, the writers and the, and the artists and stuff, they needed a break. Yeah, right. So this is a fill-in episode issue. Does it feel like that at all, or does it feel... Oh, just... very much so. Okay. <laughs> so, because this is has a little framing story before and afterwards. Right, and it's right. basically, we, we open on a, a few members of the Avengers in the Quinjet, because the Avengers have just broken up. Like it's the end of Civil War. Exactly. And so, Wonder Man is on this Quinjet... Of course it is, but it doesn't really look like it. No, he's got an incredible <laughs> mullet. Yeah, that really there's, threw there's me. Some, I want to be clear, this is, again, this is the era of... Satan's in everything, but this is 1985. There's some incredible mullets in this. Everybody has a mullet. Iron Man never takes his helmet off, but I want to be clear. At this point in his solo book, he had a mullet, a mustache, and he would jog on the beach in a half shirt. <laughs> so if you want to look that up, this is peak 1980s, I feel. Yeah, this is that's like Rocky III yeah. era. Anyway, so this, they've gone their separate ways, and Wonder Man's like... Man, the team's broken up. We're really short on teamwork. But I remember a time when we had some great teamwork. Whoa. So it's very much like the creator of this has gone, okay, let's let's do some team stuff. And they're like, team's broken up. And he's like, it's too late. I've written the script. <laughs> Here we go. So this opens on some rock and roll dudes. This is some rock and roll groupies. They have the incredible rock and roll names of Michael and Susan. Oh, that's so rock and but roll. But they're classic rock and roll dudes. They've got the blonde mullets. They've got the denim vests. Yes. And they are they are being accosted by we're immediately introduced to the villain of the piece. He's an enormous rock and roll man. Big arm. Big he's he's got he's covered in skulls and mullets. He's meant to be shown as like this very threatening villain. Yeah. But also like in the opening panel, he's severely hurt by Michael just hitting him in the in the arm with a trash can lid. <laughs> so like there's mixed signals, obviously. But anyway, he's accosting these two rock and roll kids and he's chasing them and he's lifting them up and it looks like it's curtains for them. But then we see the appearance of some aforementioned West Coast Avengers losers, Tigra and Wonder Man. This guy is the dumbest looking villain I've ever seen. Well, he's up there certainly, isn't he? <laughs> but then then this dude's like, I'm tough enough to take you two on. It's like a he's in like a onesie, but it's got those cowboy ruffles. He's got he's got some fringe. <laughs> yeah. Look, this guy's costume is endlessly fascinating. He has <laughs> <laughs> above the knee boots. He's got a deep V. Ah, oh. it's not dark like rock and yeah. roll. No, it's exactly. More disco. It's so in a glam. Lot of ways. Yeah, this this was this is glam. This is glam metal's peak, yeah, you're man. Right. It is, yeah. So good. He tosses Michael and Susan aside. He roundly just thumps Tiger and Wonder Man, Brutal. and then he reveals his magical secret because he's he's slightly winded by this activity. But what he does is he approaches a billboard of himself. <laughs> what? There's a billboard in the city of himself. Yeah. He grabs Michael and Susan and he hurls them into the billboard, which is not an Michael and Susan. Yeah, that's right. Your favorite characters <laughs> that you've really grown to know and love. And he throws them into the billboard because it's an interdimensional portal. Oh. Right? Wonder Man and Tiger are like, we've got to figure out what this dude's all about, right? So they call in the rest of the Avengers who are just immediately in the alley. They were just <laughs> hanging out as well. Why is Wonder Man covered in like porridge or goo or something? I think that's just alley goo. One of Michael's ch- chains on his on his rock and roll vest was caught on on the billboard, so he doesn't go all the way. So they rescue him, and that's perfect because there's just enough time for him to provide all the exposition necessary. Just get it out of the way. And then He's we can also go. covered in goo. Yeah, from a no- yeah. That's look. <laughs> 
Every dimension has a certain amount of goo in it. Okay. And these guys were all unlucky enough to fall into the goo. Okay. If you're right. in an, if you're in the Avengers or adjacent to the Avengers, you are gonna catch some goo. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. You're yeah. right. I'll stop. I mean, at the very least, you're gonna hang out at Tony Stark's mansion <laughs> yeah. and you're gonna put your hand in something. <laughs> anyway, turns out that Michael and Susan, right? They they were enraptured by this band called Corruption of Sin. Oh right? no. You know what I mean. I know the, what you It's mean. the devil's work, man, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they get introduced to the lead singer, the giant man himself. He's so big. He's so big and weird. <laughs> but in this in this panel, he looks quite dreamy. Look how dreamy yeah, and nice got a, he seems. Yeah, he's got a lovely smile. That's how they get you. Anyway, they get deep in the scene, man. They become roadies for the Defiler. It's a dream. Right? But then all of a sudden, all, all their friends start disappearing. Where are they going? But it turns out the Defiler is throwing them into a, a mystical portal. But this portal doesn't seem to be in a billboard. It doesn't. It's very... It's <laughs> Look, it's, it's a little bit ambiguous as to where and when he can form these portals. <laughs> it's either in his billboards or anywhere. <laughs> But anyway, they, they, they go on the run because they're like, What's, we don't want to be thrown into a mystical portal. Anyway, here's, here's Henry Pym. He's just here to, to make sense of this. And he's just like, all right, he's throwing, he's throwing him into the dimensional portal and it's, it's infusing him with energy. He's, he's throwing him in this dark dimension and he's sapping their power in order to create for himself the biggest pecs in the world. Yeah. Why doesn't he throw in someone stronger? Or is he working his way up to it? I think it? he's working his way up to okay, it. But that that's, but that's, you're absolutely right. He's, he's working his way up to a big score. That's why he's in the rock and roll band. Because he's got a concert tonight. Oh, okay. And he's going to suck everybody into the portal. So this guy must have built up some kind of rock and roll career it's over It's weird, right? Years. And it's never occurred to anybody that he's just come out of nowhere. <laughs> specifically, the dark dimension. Sure. I know you call yourself the defiler. What, are you like Jeff or what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm Susan and this is Michael. Anyway, Hen Hen Henry Pym's there. He giants up like a, a ship so all the, the non-flying members of the West Coast Avengers oh, can yes. fly along, you know. Which is most of them. They're like, sense. let's get to the concert, right? Mm. And they get to the concert and bad vibes are already happening. People are being sucked into the, the dark dimension. I know, right? Some of the Avengers are like, okay, we've got to knock down these billboards because it's built billboards. We're back to the billboard situation. Okay, so these are different billboards. These so are different billboards, clarify, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. They start knocking down these billboards. The, the innocent victims are falling off the billboards. Henry Pym's there with a giant like baseball mitt to yeah. catch them all. Does he yeah. have that with him? Apparently he does. Great. This is the era of... Hank Pym, where he doesn't, he's not Ant Man. He's just a dude who carries a lot of tiny things in his pockets. I like that. And he just gets them out there. That's a little Michael Douglas kind of. Yeah, for sure. Hank yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, right? There, yeah. Thing, things aren't going well for anyone, really, but mostly the Avengers, because oh. he's like, they, we, we got to rescue some of these people out of this, this dark dimension, but we need the Defiler to do it, right? Mm. But then Hank Pym's like, I've been re reading energies with my energy reading things, and he's like, listen, we got to get Michael in. Michael's covered in goop. He's covered in other dimensional goop. Oh my god, the goop you thought the back. goop was you thought the goop was irrelevant <laughs> to the story, but it's not. He's been infused with goop, and so he Incredible. has the key. He has the key to unlock these dimensional barriers. There are no loose ends in this story. But he's got to sacrifice himself. You know, he's got to. Oh, he's good. like, we we daren't sacrifice this innocent kid, and he's like, no, no, I owe it to Susan. I got to rescue Susan. I'm a put me in, coach. Good. Right? So Henry Pym, he giants up a really big rope. Yes, and he good. ties it to Iron Man, who stays on the other side of the portal this time. Yep, yep. And then some of the Avengers, Henry Pym, and some of the useless ones, they go into the dark dimension, right? And they and they they see all the the innocent victims that the, the defile is captured, right? And they're all stuck in some sort of interdimensional flan situation. It's really <laughs> Mockingbird gets in there and starts hammering at the goop with her sticks. Ah, uh, goop hammering. Yeah, that's ha rock and roll. Hank Pym gets in there with his chain, with his giant chainsaw. <laughs> It's it's a it's a sight to behold. He gives it a bit of, oh the the the, por the portal's about to collapse because yeah, we've we've is. rescued all the kids right yep, yep. without them being tra trapped in the flan. The the portals are collapsing, so we've got to get out of here. If only I had some real cool current, kind of a a real cool transport method, a real big one yeah. that I could really connect with the kids with. Oh, I've got this skateboard. Let's all hop on this giant skateboard. So not a 4x4 four four Jeep, which no. has its own engine and means of No, it's a, he's got a skateboard in his pocket. Or it's alright. Or an aeroplane. No, he's got a giant skateboard. He cracks it open. <laughs> he's so current and relevant. It's astounding that he wasn't like, guys, let's get on this. Let's go to this giant ALF plush toy. <laughs> 
they pull the skateboard out of the dark dimension. So 80. So 80. Long story short, they escape the goo. D the defiler's on the run, man. He's like, I've got to get out of here. I'm powerless. I've got to, I've got to, get, I've got to escape. But it's all right, because the hero of the day, Michael, he gets in. He gives him the old one-two. He gives him the old, you know, when you run out of somebody's legs and they trip? Yeah, one those of those. The days. That's, yeah. Very, that's very the 80s. It, absolutely, it because is. Because he didn't have any powers. Yeah. It's, it's amazing he didn't call him a fart knocker while he was doing it. <laughs> and then the defiler falls into his billboard, his own billboard. He does an incredible vertical trip, which you wouldn't appreciate because you're a horizontal leaper kind of guy. <laughs> Big time. But he, he, hits the, he hits the dimensional pool just as it collapses and he's trapped in his own dark dimension forever. He could have lived a, an earth rock and roll lifestyle. That's right. Man, what a tale. It's what a tale. And Susan and Howard, they, Michael, whatever their names are, <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're, they're back together at last. They know that this is not this is not the lifestyle for them. They're going to get into something safer. Yeah, like real devil worship. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So who was this guy? I don't know. Well, he's never seen again. I think it's time for resurgence. I absolutely agree. Yeah. What's he working on in there? What's he working on, Mason? Just, just more goo, I guess. <laughs> just really just stirring the goo, I guess. Is that what you do? Wow, what a tale! I know. I'd, I'd be you'd be hard pressed to find a better Avengers story on the small or big screen or comic book or any kind of medium, really. That's true. Anyway, it ends. The happy couple are back together. Then we fade back to the Quinjet and Wonder Man's like, yeah, those were the days. Days of teamwork. Anyway, back to our dumb life where there's no more teamwork. Oh no, the Quinjet's crashing. <gasps> Cliffhanger. So we'll be back next week to wrap this up? No, nah, nah, that's I'm it. not going back. <laughs> I'm not going back to the 80s again. Yuck. <laughs> well, this show is called Caravan of Garbage, isn't it? Yes. It comes out, it's every it's every Tuesday, but we also have uh, videos here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Plus our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows every Monday. All that is linked below. Also, planetbroadcasting.com is where you can find everything collated. You can't stop us from making content or telling you where content is. Yeah, I mean, if people stop stop watching, then we'll definitely stop. We'll definitely stop. Yeah, then, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll have to get it's a real very jobs. clear indicator that <laughs> nobody wants us to do it. Yeah, but if you've got any suggestions for anything to look at, video game, TV show, movie, comic, whatever, let us know below. And everybody else, stay. What's an eighties expression? Stay goopy. Stay goopy. <laughs> Just go into an alley and rub yourself in goop. Yeah. Totally radical. Totally alf. Very alf. <laughs> Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.